Hey there, Chris here from IELTS Advantage and today we're going to move on with our IELTS vocabulary mini course and we'll move on into day two and day two is answering this question. What does band seven vocabulary look like? So you'll hear a lot of people talking about high level vocabulary and complex words and simple words. So we're gonna actually look at what these things are and we're gonna give you a really cool online tool that you can use to analyze your own essay. So it's just totally free and you can look at the level of the different words. So what does band seven vocabulary look like? When you talk to most students, they'll say things like big words long words, complex words, high level words. But when I, students normally ask me about this or when we're talking about this and they say, how can I use more big words or how can I use more complex words? What I'll normally ask them is, well, what's a small word? What's a simple word? What's a low level word? And, and most students, the problem is that they have no idea what the difference is between a high level word and a low level word. So we're gonna look at that today and we're gonna look at like, what is the key to getting a band seven or above when it comes to vocabulary? So a little test before we move into the detail. Here we have a list of words on the left hand side. And here we have a list of words on the right hand side. What I'd like you to do in the comments is tell me which one is higher level. All right, which words do you think are higher level or more complex or would get you a higher score on the IELTS test, if you're doing the speaking test or the writing test. If you think the words on the left are higher level, say left. And if you think the words on the right are higher level, say right. All right, and we'll come back and I'll look at the comments in a second, and then I'll reveal the answer in a minute. So take a second, have a look. Left in the comments if you think left is higher level, right if you think those are higher level. It'll be interesting to see your answers. These are all linked to this. So this is the CEFR, uh, Common European Framework, and you can look this up, just type in CEFR, and you'll get the different levels of English. So we have C2, C1, B2, B1, and then it goes down to like A2, A1. Um, and they are equivalent to different levels in IELTS. So most of you watching this video want a band seven, all right? So a band seven, According to this, this is from Cambridge, I believe, or the British Council, it's around a C1 level. Uh, band 8, band 8.5, band 9, around a C2 level, so you're proficient. So band 7 is advanced level. So if we think about those words again, some of these words are C1 and C2 words. Some of these words are B1 and B2 words. So some of these words are around here, advanced, proficient, and some of these words are here, B1, B2, so down band four, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 5, 6. The, the, the bands you probably don't want to, to get. So again, left or right, well, let's have a look. Left, C1 and C2 words, right, B1 and B2 words. So let's have a look and see whether you thought left or right. Let's have a little look. I'll be very disappointed <laughs> if I'm wrong, but I think most of you would have said this side. So, right, 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 left, left. So about 80% of you said right. So about 80% of you are wrong. Um, and that's not your fault. Uh, I might have played a little bit of, uh, of a trick on you because I put in words that are quite short and here words that are quite long. But this proves my point that most of you think that high level vocabulary means long complex words and low level vocabulary means quite simple short words and that's actually not the case. So how do you find out you know, what level a word is? Well, there's a really, really easy way of doing that. Just go to Cambridge Online Dictionary. So just go to Google and type in Cambridge Online Dictionary and put in any word. And beside the word, you'll see C1, C2, B1, B2, A2, A1. And it'll tell you the level of that word. So, so what? What does this mean? Well, when you hear people talking about using high level words or using complex words, they probably don't know what they're talking about. And you should only use the real evidence, the real facts to guide you on this. 
don't listen to someone who says, like as we looked at in video one, learn these five words and you'll get a high score. That's absolute nonsense. So can we get a high score by using lots of C1 and C2 words? Most of you watching this video now are like, hmm, all I have to do is just learn lots of C1 and C2 words, put them into my essay, or use them in the speaking test and I'll get a high score, right? Well, not so much. Let's have a look. So what I'm gonna show you now uh, is a really great online tool that you can use. And it's produced by Cambridge English, so the people who write the, the IELTS test, so you know that it's relevant and it's reliable. And if you type in um, Cambridge Text Inspector or Cambridge English Profile Text Inspector, what you can do is you can put in a text. So you could take the text from the Wall Street Journal here, just as an example, put it in, and it will look at all of the words and it will give you a bar chart or a pie chart telling you which words are A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. So you would think that really good writing means that there are lots of C1 and C2 words and quite a few B1 and B2 words and not many A1 and A2 words because they're simple, right? So what I did was just take a random article from the Wall Street Journal and the Wall Street Journal is quite, you know, it's quite highbrow, the, the vocabulary in it is quite specific, it's quite high level and put it in here. And what I found was, and this is pretty much the same of any good journal article or good newspaper, 36% of the words were A1 and 13% were A2. So 50% of the words were what most students would say are low level. So does that mean the people at the Wall Street Journal are like band five um, IELTS writers? I don't think so. And 14% B1, 10% uh, B2, 23% the, the text inspector didn't recognize the words. But here, C1 was 3%, and the highest level, C2, was just oh, 1%. All right, and if you go and download or, or look at some like really, really high level academic scientific journal articles or any sort of journal articles and put it into that, you'll find this kind of pattern. A tiny percentage of the total words are so-called high level and the vast majority of the words are not. And if you showed that to most IELTS students or mo and some IELTS teachers, they would say, oh, the, the vocabulary is not very good. Um, it's not high level enough. So that's kind of flawed logic. And we can look at something else. What I'm gonna show you now is from IELTS 11. So I just picked one of my official Cambridge IELTS books randomly. And this is a student sample that they give at the, at the end of the book. So at the end of the book, I'm sure a lot of you have used these. They have student samples. I took part of a paragraph and one that said it was band seven. So it's probably band seven vocabulary. And let's look at this one. Is it full of high level words? Well, let's have a look and see. So let's have a look, uh, let's get it read. As character is concerned, and there's some grammar mistakes and everything because that's what, that's, that's um, what, what most band seven essays would have. They would have some grammar mistakes. So we have the wearer of clothes, follower of fashion, another aspect, clean, ironed, grubby, very casual, smart, concerned. So the vocabulary that they're using, I wouldn't say most people would look at that and say, oh, it's really, really high level. Some of it actually is. Some of, of those words um, such as grubby, uh, ironed, follower of fashion is a nice phrase. Most of the, some of these words are quite high level, but the vast majority of the words are not. They are A1 and A2 words. So what does this tell us about getting a band seven on the IELTS test? To get a band seven on the IELTS test when it comes to vocabulary, you need to focus on the basics first. You need to be able to do the A1 and the A2 and the B1 and the B2 
stuff first before you even think about trying to go up to the C1 and the C2 words. It's not like the examiner is going to look at your essay and you've made a bunch of mistakes with quite simple A1, A2, B1, B2 words, and you have you know, five C2 words and you use those correctly. The examiner's not gonna look at those C2 words and think this person's vocabulary is amazing. They're just gonna think this person has memorized a bunch of high level words and put them into their essay. Um, they're not silly. And if you look at the vocabulary here, follower of fashion, ironed, grubby, smart, uh, very casual, these are all uh, wearer of clothes. These are all uh, words and phrases related to one topic, which is fashion. And this is what the examiners will be looking at m more than using a couple of high level words. They'll be looking for your ability to use topic specific words because that will, that will show them that, it, that you have a wide ranging vocabulary. Because if you can use lots of fashion words, does that mean that you just study lots of fashion? Well, maybe if you really love fashion, but if you know a lot of fashion vocabulary, it's highly likely that you know a lot of other vocabulary about many other topics. So on the speaking test, they're going to ask you about a range of different topics. Why do you think that is? To test your vocabulary for one reason. Because if you can talk about fashion, and maybe the environment, and maybe education, and maybe technology and use topic specific words for all of those topics, you're proving that you have a very wide ranging vocabulary, not memorizing just a few high level words, which might not even be high level um, in the first place as we demonstrated, but learning vocabulary properly and using it properly. So what can you do? Number one, don't learn lists of words. They're completely useless. We talked about that on day one. If you haven't seen lesson one, go and check it out on the YouTube channel or, or the Facebook page. Don't try and impress the examiner. You're not going to fool the examiner. You're not going to trick the examiner into thinking that by using you know, five or six words that are high level that your, um, that your vocabulary is great. Walk before you can run. Uh, the number of people I see trying to use very high level vocabulary but getting the basics wrong is unbelievable so focus on the basics first you cannot learn how to run before you can walk you can't learn how to walk before you can crawl and um, so focus on that first and then build up and obviously improve your vocabulary and that's what we're going to look at on friday at 11 a.m and on lesson three uh, the final day of our vocabulary mini course we're going to look at uh, a step-by-step -step guide for improving your vocabulary. If you want more information about vocabulary, go to ieltsadvantage.com vocabulary, or just Google IELTS Advantage vocabulary. You'll get a lot of information there. Um, check out our word circles. A lot of students really like those. It shows you a great way to record vocabulary. And if you want our help with anything, feel free to email us, chris at ieltsadvantage.com. Thank you very much, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Let me know uh, if you did or if you still have questions about vocabulary, let me know in the comments and either myself or one of the team will get back to you. Thanks very much.